We had to come to Glasgow because we're on this journey to celebrate host cities for the Euros. It makes total sense to come up and see their take on terrace, fashion, Adidas, but not just that, how it crosses over with music and celebrate that whole thing of, you know, creativity. And there's certain people we have to see. Number one in that for me would be Curzo, you know, a kind of like mythical figure in collecting terms and Adidas. People sort of even didn't know if he existed. He always had this rumour of this guy who had this amazing collection. So, for us lot and for people who maybe don't even know, could you, amongst all this amazing, I'm not going to say the word collection, but amongst <laughs> all these amazing shoes of your own, could you grab out a pile? You'd say were like the big ones at the start of the terrorist thing. I mean, I can see yeah. a pair. Starting point, obviously. And another pair. Your starting point's got to be gazelles, isn't it? Um, yeah, look at Shoe. Pretty much in the same vein, although, to be honest, um, they never really kicked in until later. Just the style and the tongues. Um, probably my favourites. And it's pure and simply because of the tongue. Okay. Gonna... Lovely, man. It's just a beautiful silhouette. Yeah. So at this time, were all these still being like made in France and all that? Um, it's gone, but. Nicely worn. Made in, oh well, made in China, 91, so early 90s. Get away. Yeah. So we've got our gazelle. So what else should we go to directly? Um, I can see jeans over there. Along with the jeans, they just caught. Mm. But only got these, I don't know, it wasn't, it wasn't that long ago. Because mm. everybody had seen them in the catalogue, but nobody actually had up here. Mm. Searched for about 15 years, I guess. Mm -hmm. Eventually they said, nah, they don't exist. They, they never brought them out. Mm. And then it was just a managed to find a pair and then another couple turned up but there's as far as i know there's only about half a dozen that have turned up since get away yeah i could have been a rich rich man if i could have found any <laughs> jeans of, uh, you know, of any jeans at that yeah. time and now everybody was after them and how amazingly rare they were yeah. Yeah. Yes. oh yeah it is. So these are a lot of like, these runners it's amazing made in france i mean if anybody's the new sort of train ahead thinks everything should be new and modern and slick, you know, I'm totally against that. These have been worn. They are exactly what they are. They were used. That's oh, webs, yeah. but I thought they were 500. Yeah, so 500. But, it's, you know, same sort of thing. ZX380s. Is it 380s? I thought it was webs. Look at that, though. <laughs> hey, de -de -de -de. To be honest, the ones which really done it for me then um, always <sighs> there's early ones and there's later ones the later ones are the ones that basically everybody's going nuts for the, the japans the japanese market is mm. obviously it's become huge but mm. um yeah. we we get into that before everybody else jumped in so yeah it's like using um yahoo instead of ebay yeah. getting someone to bid for you yeah so got them all um and then it just went nuts absolutely nuts um but the ones that done it for me the uh, jogger, I get him when I was 12 year old, 1978, yeah, right. and that's yeah. what started my love for basically trainers. Yeah, really? So that would be it? Yeah. yeah. Those were the ones. I've got photographs of me um, on holiday in Scarborough. Yeah. Wearing them. So you um, went I wore them literally till they fell off my feet. There's no stripes on them, or they were polished and everything. Yeah. And it took me about 25 years to get another pair. Get her away. Yeah. So it's a question I wouldn't even ask myself, but I do get asked it, and I always find it quite hard. But what do you think? And if you can't sum it up, you can't. But what do you think is about Addy in the Three Stripes? Why do you think they grabbed us all? Um, when I was young, it was like everything, your, your whole social standing basically related to what was on your feet. Yeah. Um, if you were playing football in a, in a game, it was your boots. You know, and it's like bacon bar supers. Um, and then it basically just this whole world opened up. Mm. And it was like, Penarol, I did this Penarol, mm. yeah. Um, what done it for me was going abroad because mm. we used to go on football tours, I'm talking about from 12 to 15, and bringing back these Adidas things that nobody else had got. Mm. Um, you know, Pierre Litbarski, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like yeah. um, Carl Heinz Rummenigge, but luminous yellow, mm. a huge big tongue. Mm. It's like you never get them here in a million years, but it was only Adidas that were doing them, you know. Mm. Um, it was luxury without being a luxury brand you know mm. everybody can access it but mm. it was like 
instead of just the run of mill everybody else had, there was always that something else that you could get yeah. that nobody did. Yeah. You know, because yeah. Adidas, Adidas would do it, but you had to go and find it. Yeah. Um, and like you're saying in different colours. Yeah, it's the same with the t-shirts. It's the, the plain t-shirt, you know, yeah. getting long sleeved. Yeah. You know, when Superstars was on, and um, yeah. you would see it, and like, yeah. long sleeve one. Yeah. You get that, get it a colour that no one else had. Yeah. And then there was the football strips as well. I always remember I had an Ipswich town. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. like the, and they were brilliant. How, how would you say, in this era of the sneakerhead, and I'm going to use that term because I think it exists now, <laughs> Even though that it was, like, I'm always like anti sneak or anything because I think it's just an American swear term, word. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's a swear word, which is hard to say to anybody else, isn't it? But how do you feel? How do you feel about that? But also about saying where trainers' culture began in this country. And I know that's a bit yeah, I mean, it's very much a football thing. But on top of that, I mean, it kind of moved on as well. Um, out with the football, if you were going to clubs, you were seeing people wearing, you know, it was like gazelles, uh, campus superstars um were a very specific style mm. um so it basically transferred from football into club culture yeah and then just into mainstream i mean yeah. that, that, that's the thing that people don't realize it's like now you walk down a high street and everybody's wearing ralph lauren you know so everybody's wearing but yeah without the casuals yeah they'd still be wearing um sort of little woods bhs you know it's yeah. like we created design culture for, yeah for clothes yeah um and at the time it was like you know it's it, the actual thought about it is ridiculous. You know, 16, 17 year old kids get out and spending hundreds of pounds, hundreds of pounds on one outfit and wearing it literally for a few weeks and then moving on to something else. Mm. Um, but, and the thing is, the big difference is always fashion and style. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anybody mm. can buy fashion, you can't buy style. Mm. Um, and the trainer thing, the thing I loved about it more than anything else, every time you went away, you be bored about looking to see if you can mobs are fighting or anything like that just looking at their feet mm. you know looking what they were wearing first of all mm. um, we were so underground it was beyond belief weren't we really <laughs> you No, know, we were like you said the casual whole casual movement was so overlooked yep. and so marginalised for whatever reasons A because probably we were working class B because it was linked to being on the terraces and a bit of violence and then you had like that era of people who got into like trainers from 85 and Jordan in our country you know, <laughs> and then they were the ones who then became the ones who got in the magazines and the telly who were allowed to even speak about it if they did speak about it. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. without sort of like having a rant, I, it is a rant and it's yeah. an angry thing that if they missed this movement until now, it's only been appreciated now. I don't know. It's every time I go to football and I sort of look and see if anybody's moving on. Yeah. It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> really, it's hard to, because as I said to you, it's like they've been drip fed the stuff. Instagram, you know, so like, yeah, you should wear this. Right. Yeah, but I suppose, and in, in its way, it's like it's like everything else. It's like influence, you know. It's like, and it's what influence you decide to take. Mm. Um, but instead of actually going out and looking for yourself, you just have to sit back and look. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you're saying, and we can't do that because we are part of the looking back. <laughs> 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 